This clip illustrates how we calculate confidence intervals for regression coefficients. Here is an estimated simple regression model, log wage as a function of years of experience with our output. And the sort of question we want to answer is what sort of values for beta 1 is our evidence beta 1 hat consistent with? And confidence intervals are the sort of technique that can give you an answer to this question. It all starts from this relationship. The t-test is t distributed with n minus 2 degrees of freedom. Once you understand this statement, you can calculate probabilities from here that basically give you an interval for beta 1. And this interval is centered around the sample estimate beta 1 hat and then we subtract something on one side and add something on the other and that beta 1 hat that's the one piece of evidence which we have from our regression model. What do we subtract? Subtract we subtract and add something that involves the standard error of beta 1 hat so that's this blue value here that is one element of the term that is being subtracted and added the second element of that term is something that comes from this distribution, some sort of factor that comes from this distribution. So it comes from the t distribution with n minus 2 degrees of freedom. But to know exactly what that factor should be, we also need to know what our the probability for our confidence interval should be, so 1 minus alpha, and then we need the alpha over half value from the t-distribution. We'll see how this works in just a second. n here is 428, so you don't have to count the points. That means n minus 2 is 426, and let's set alpha to 1%. So that means that the probability which we want to calculate in our confidence interval is going to be 1 minus 0 0.01 or in other words 0.99 or 99 percent. So we want a 99 percent confidence interval here. We want to be pretty certain that whatever interval we calculate does actually contain the unknown beta 1. So from now on we just have to substitute in a few numbers. So we have uh, our sample estimate for beta 1 hat is 0.0152. Then we need to, our standard error for beta 1 hat is 0 0.0043, 0 0.0043. Uh, then we need that T factor. Okay, so we, uh, really have to go to the t distribution here to get that value so what we the value we need is the value from the t distribution of 426 degrees of freedom and that value which cuts off half a percentage point here's our table so we want one tailed half a percentage point that's the very right hand side column or two tailed 1%, 99% confidence interval. We have 426 degrees of freedom, so we use the infinity row, and that gives us a value of 2.576. So with that value, we'll go back, and we can complete our calculation for the confidence interval. We just enter that value here. And from now on, it's really just punching numbers into the calculator. But it's good to remember what the structure is. So it's the probability that something happens is 99%. And what is it we are after? We want a lower and an upper bound for the unknown population coefficient beta 1. That lower bound turns out to be 0 0.0041 and the upper 0 0.0263. Let's look at that just on a line for that unknown coefficient beta 1. So we have the lower bound and the upper bound here. And basically what we can use our evidence for is to be able to say that the unknown beta 1 is somewhere in that interval with a probability of 99%. So we're not certain it's in that interval, but it's pretty damn likely.
So what we've done here is a confidence interval and why not apply this technique now in a practice question. We have the same regression output but now I want you to calculate the 95% confidence interval for beta naught. Remember n is 428. Pause the clip. So we'll start out with this confidence interval. It's the same as the one before, just that now we're looking at beta zero. And that means it's these yellow bits which we have, beta naught hat and the standard error of beta naught hat. We have 428 observations, that means 428 minus 2 estimate coefficients. We have 426 degrees of freedom. The 95% confidence interval implies an alpha of 5%. That means when we're looking for this t factor, we need the value that cuts off 2.5% alpha over 2. So let's plug in some values. The estimated coefficient is 0.9920. So our confidence interval is going to be centered around that. To get the lower bound, we need to subtract something from that. To get the upper bound, we need to add something. Our probability is still 95%. So the next thing we obviously have is the uh, standard error of beta not hat. That's 0 0.0657 on both sides. And now we just need that factor from the T distribution. Now. A lot of degrees of freedom, so close to normal distribution, 2.5%, that's 1.96. Okay, after a while you will know this value without looking at the table, but look at the table to confirm it. And the rest is just punching in numbers again. We'll find out that our 95% confidence interval for beta naught is uh, with lower bound 0 0.8632 and upper bound 1.1208.